Hi, I'm Jessica Lahr, and welcome to another edition of FLX Weekly on FingerLakes1.tv. You couldn't have drawn up a more perfect 4th of July weekend here in the Finger Lakes, and now the summer fun is continuing after a short work week. Canal Fest returns to Seneca Falls on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with great food, crafts, music, rides, and more along the Seneca Falls Canal Harbor. The festival will be highlighted by a great fireworks display on Saturday night at 10 o'clock and the Aquacade Watercraft Parade at 4 on Saturday. There will also be a duck race, beer garden, petting zoo, and the annual Women's Right to Rock Festival at the bandstand. More information can be found at SenecaFalls.com slash CanalFest. Also this weekend, the Hill Kimura pageant gets underway in Palmyra with the performances on Friday and Saturday as a cast of 700 tell the story of the Book of Mormon. Admission is free and the pageant runs through July 16th. Friday night marks another in the series of Geneva Nights Out from 5 o'clock to 8 in downtown Geneva. Trey Levin at King Ferry Winery is hosting their second annual Kings of Summer Party on the east side of Cayuga Lake on Saturday from 1 to 10. Penguin Bay Winery and Hector is hosting their Penguin Party from noon to 5 on Saturday with live music, barbecue food, and wine slushies. St. Peter's Episcopal Church of Bloomfield announces its 57th annual antique show featuring 50 antique dealers in East Bloomfield from 10 to 4 on Saturday. Enjoy a night with the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra at CMAC in Canandaigua on Saturday when they light up the night with upbeat songs that will remind you of your favorite movies. And the summer concert series at the Sodas Bay Lighthouse continues on Sunday from 2 to 4 with a free performance by the Orient Express. And if you do have outdoor plans this weekend, you may be dodging showers as the cold front pushes through the region on Friday and Saturday. The front will bring a little relief to the heat and humidity, but high temperatures will remain in the 80s through early next week. Friday will be partly sunny and continued hot with a 60% chance of showers or a thunderstorm in the afternoon and into the overnight. The chance of rain will continue into Saturday morning before clearing up for the afternoon. Saturday's high will be in the low 80s. Then on Sunday, expect mostly sunny skies with a high near 80 degrees. Check out the full forecast and live local radar by clicking on weather at FingerLakes1.com or on the FingerLakes1.com Android or iPhone app. Next, a look at our favorite local photos submitted to FingerLakes1.com over the holiday weekend. These horses were photographed by Rachel Burkholder as they were sampling the hay from the day's haymaking at a farm along Route 96A in Romulus. Amy Hawker took this close-up of a Cecropia moth in northern Seneca County on Friday afternoon. Blas Ramirez sent us this photo of a youngster enjoying one of the rides at the Geneva American Legion on Sunday night. Robert Stopper met a large group of Canadian bicyclists who visited Lyons as they biked the Erie Canalway Trail on Friday as part of their tour of the Finger Lakes. Rachel Burkholder captured the gathering of boats around the north end of Seneca Lake in preparation for the fireworks display at sunset in Geneva on Sunday. And Scott Bonacci captured this peaceful sunset over Seneca Lake on Sunday evening as this boat was headed for home. Kenneth Hackman sent us this photo near Waterloo on Saturday evening as the cows picked up the last of their hair, hay under a rainbow that formed after a brief shower passed through. Here, 13-year-old Lauren Bentz proudly displayed her catch on Saturday afternoon on Cayuga Lake near Aurora. And finally, our favorite photo from the weekend comes from Rachel Burkholder with this shot of the fireworks over Seneca Lake in Geneva, illuminating the shoreline and the Bellhurst Castle on Sunday evening. Once again, great photos, everyone. If you'd like to send us your local photos, scroll to the bottom of our photos page at FingerLakes1.com to learn how. I'll be back in 60 seconds with a conversation with the Lyons Town Supervisor and candidate for the 54th Dis District in New York State Senate seat. So many sights to see on the internet, but for everything local, there's no place you can get it. At FingerLakes1.com. Come on over to FingerLakes1.com. Mike has your homepage. News, weather, sports, and fun.
local news from over 40 sources, custom local weather, over 10 hours of live broadcasts and podcasts every week on your computer, tablet, television, or smartphone. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Tell me, tell me, tell me, dot. www.fingerlakes1.com Lions Town Supervisor and candidate for the 54th District New York State Senate seat, Brian Manktelow, was in studio last Thursday afternoon to talk about his campaign. That is one of the one of the more interesting tidbits that I've read over the last uh, month or so is the the number that right around I, I can't recall who it was that actually published the number but right around 10,000 bills get introduced or reintroduced every single year in New York State but very few of those are actually acted on and I, I, it seems like that number that 10,000 number is something where a lot of people are going to look at that and say no wonder things are getting lost no wonder the the process does does the core process itself need to change yes I think we need to simplify bills I think we need to have bills that are actually just one bill. We can't have all these caveats that are coming in, and we've got this along with this bill, this add-on. Let's keep it to the bill. Let's keep it simple, and just really concentrate on one bill at a time and not throw a whole gamut of bills out there. Now, one of the really uh, more polarizing issues in Seneca County in particular, um, and even has sort of leached itself out onto the other counties, Ontario County has their own landfill. Mm -hmm. There's a very large landfill, one of the largest landfills here in Seneca County. Mm -hmm. um, and it does impact uh, folks up in Wayne County as well. The smell sometimes does make its way up there. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, that issue in particular, the landfilling issue, how you approach it, and what your sort of uh, process will be for dealing with it if you are elected in November. Well, there are so many landfills, not just in Ontario County and Seneca County. We have high acres up in Wayne County, and we have trash coming into Wayne County on a train. So those, that trash goes through our community. But in the long term, the landfills are not going to go away. They're going to be here for a very, very long time. We may not see the uh, adverse effects of those landfills, and hopefully that never happens. But if it does, we need to have a plan at the state level that whoever put this trash in these landfills, if there's a plan there to mediate the problems you know, for our children, our grandchildren, children, or their children. Mm -hmm. So we need to put a plan in place. What that plan is, I'm not sure at this point, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to sit down with all the other senators and assembly and our constituents and say, hey, what's important? How can we get to this plan and what's, how is this plan gonna work? Now, uh, one of the, th with the landfill debate in particular here in Seneca County, one of the uh, regular uh, comebacks to it is the finance, the finance side. Now, you've talked repeatedly now about the unfunded mandates. Now, is it your belief that if you start uh, working on the finances at the top end, at the state level, mm -hmm. that trickle down to the counties and the towns and the villages, <coughs> can that have a, a sort of easing effect everywhere else? That There really needs to be a huge change in that. I yeah. mean, I just signed a grant yesterday for a grant for $38,000 for the town of Lyons. Mm -hmm. We need to stop having our money go down to Albany and allowing that money to come back to us and we have a, a slight chance of getting a grant. That mm -hmm. money is ours. They're our taxpayers' money. That money should stay in our local communities. And if we do that, it's going to start easing some of the other problems up. Now, uh, just a couple weeks ago, we saw you at the uh, Seneca Army Depot mm -hmm. uh, sale um, press conference that they held for uh, Earl Martin, the individual mm -hmm. who purchased the property or is going to be purchasing the property. Um, talk to us a little bit about why you were there and what sort of uh, what that means to you for this area? Well, to, to represent this district, we need, really need to know what's going on in all of our all the different counties. And having toured the uh, Seneca Army Depot many years ago, having an understanding of what was there and having an understanding of what Mr. Earl Martin's business was, and I think he's a very educated man. I think he's down to earth, and I think his word is his word. And I think the choice of him being in Seneca County, him being a Seneca County resident, was huge for the county. It's not only going to benefit Seneca County, it's going to benefit Wayne County and other counties as well because some of the people in Wayne County buy from Mr. Martin. Mm -hmm. But I'm really happy with their choice because he's got such great ideas 
and I think he's going to follow through on his word, and that's what we need today. Now, that's uh, we're talking there. You're talking about development. You're talking about investing 13 million dollars over five, ten years. That it's that is meaningful for a county like Seneca, where it's more rural. Now, another major uh, development on the northern end of the county is the Del Lago Resort and Casino. Mm -hmm. um, from uh, from your perspective as running for Senate, but also as the uh, Wayne County representative, mm -hmm. what has been your perspective as you have sort of watched this, you know, start as a seedling and work its way up uh, to what it is now? Well, I think it's very important for this area. The Wayne County Board of Supervisors did pass a resolution supporting that uh, for Seneca County, and we're talking 1,200 jobs, 1,200 jobs in upstate New York. 1,200 jobs in this 54th district is a huge, huge number. Mm -hmm. is, are there going to be some issues with it? Yeah, there's issues with anything. But right now, 1,200 family wage earning jobs mm -hmm. is a huge, a huge benefit for this community and the communities that surround it. Now, there, that actually is going, that leads right into my next question. Now, do you think that will have a ripple effect uh, for a community like Clyde or some of the some of the towns in Wayne County that are sort of bound by that that uh, 414 corridor. Absolutely, we have some builders that are in. I'll speak on in Lyons for for instance. Mm -hmm. We have some builders that are doing townhouses, mm -hmm. and when this thing went through, they automatically came up and started re revamping the layout, saying, yeah. "Look, at, we're going to need this type of housing," and that's what these communities need, not just in Wayne County, but all the all the surrounding ones as well. Now. Uh, going right along with that, people are going to see this and they're going to say, uh, we love that there are going to be 1,200 additional jobs here in Seneca County and here in this district, mm -hmm. but um, that isn't always the norm, unfortunately. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you, what some of the things that can be done to continue um, pushing job development in this entire district. Well, it's, the, the easy answer is we're over-regulated, so we've got to get rid of regulations. Mm -hmm. We're over-taxed. We need, we need to make it possible for new business owners and our business owners that are here to make it much easier to do business in New York State. And it is really discouraging as a, as a business owner, as a farmer, and as a county legislator as well as a town supervisor, I see how these things affect our local business people. And it, it's discouraging to them, but I think that we still have hope, and with mm -hmm. hope we can make some changes. And, and I want to see New York State grow, and I want to see this area grow. So we really need to sit down and start looking at some of the regulations and laws that are on the books that really do hurt our area. And having the background with the ag part of it, so many different aspects in ag, truck driving versus you know, welding versus anything, all these things and how they affect our communities, I understand that. And I have that personal touch and that understanding. And, and I think that's why I'm a good candidate for this area. Now, one of the going back to your time as town supervisor in Lyons, what is sort of that uh, the fondest memory, or I guess the proudest accomplishment that you've had in Lyons in the seven or eight years that you've been in office now? I believe that the fondest accomplishment or, or memory is when you have an individual come that's frustrated either locally, countywide, or statewide, and you can sit down with that individual and and help them and have them understand what's going on and get them help, and they're satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. That and having the opportunity to reach out to our school kids, mm -hmm. um, having the opportunity to, to go to all the schools in Wayne County, to our leadership classes and speaking to them on how important it is for them to be voters and being involved in this process and helping them understand how difficult it is right now in New York, but having the hope to change it. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about ethics and ethics reform, and the state did make some really, really small steps towards trying to curb uh, the corruption in New York State. We talked a little bit about that earlier, but uh, what do you think are sort what should be the expectation heading into? Because I think people expect it not to happen overnight, the change. Um, but what is the realistic sort of outlook on that? Well, I think what we've seen so far is really just a bunch of political fluff. Mm -hmm. I think until we dive into it and actually take a hard stand on some of these issues, I think people are still going to have that question. Mm -hmm. They're not. I still think the the mindset of our of our residents, including myself, is it's fluff, and I really don't trust Albany yet. Mm -hmm. We have got to go down there and change that. One individual is not going to do that, but we as a community and we as a state can do that. And I'm not going to 
promise that it's going to be easy because it's not. Anything worth getting isn't easy. But I think if we s continue to move forward one step at a time, building those relationships with the other senators and assembly down there, I, I think we can make that happen as, as well as changes in the upper echelon of the government. Now, talk to us a little bit about um, what are some of the, for the average viewer who's watching who maybe hasn't been watching this race super, super closely or um, hasn't been uh, fully engaged yet, because it is still very early, yes. what is the biggest difference between you as a candidate and your competitors? I think the overall experience that I have as mm -hmm. a business owner, as a farmer, uh, town supervisor, county legislator, also um, as the vice president for the New York Corn Growers, having the experience in Albany down there as well as a little bit at the at the federal level in Washington. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm a father, mm -hmm. a husband, a veteran, and understanding the local issues with our schools, being involved with our schools. And all those issues and factors, I've got the experience, I've got the dedication, and I, I feel I'm a very, a very, very strong candidate to uh, represent this district. Now, right now, you have been going through the process of collecting signatures. Yes. Um, talk to us a little bit about what that's been like. What are some of the things you've been hearing from people? What um, what's been the tone? Uh, what what have you experienced? I experienced the experience I've seen is generally people are pretty willing to sign the petition. Mm -hmm. I think with our presidential race going on right now, with what's going on at the federal level, I think it's it's hurting our people. I think mm -hmm. it's hurting them because we're right back to Washington. They're politicians. They're lying. They're we can't trust them, and I think that's going to hurt our local level races this year. But in general, I think people are pretty confident that the people out there have a very good mindset and are willing to see this through. Mm -hmm. Now, is, it, is that something that you feel will impact turnout at all? Is that something that you think will work itself out by then where the candidates will be or the voters will be engaged enough in these local elections? Because this was, this was a seat that a year ago people probably wouldn't have even been thinking about being a contested race. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that was flipped upside down when Senator Nazolio said that he wasn't going to be seeking re-election. Um, what is sort of the mind? What is that mindset for you? What I see out there, going through the different counties as mm -hmm. we're getting these petitions signed, people are generally interested in what's going to happen with this district because mm -hmm. they understand we don't want to lose this district yep. and how important this change can be for the next senator moving forward in New York State and how important it's going to be for their families, their businesses, and the general outcome of New York. So what is next for you as a candidate? What is the next, uh, talk to us a little bit about what the next month, month and a half, two months looks like for you. Running, running, running. Getting out and seeing every constituent that we can, going to every meeting. And that's just not part of it. It's sitting down with these individuals mm -hmm. and going through this signature process. You want to get there, you want to get their signature and you want to move on, but at the same time, it's very important to take the time to sit down and understand what's really important to them. And that's that's my goal. When we're meeting with someone, we give them the time, not <laughs> job and move forward. Yeah. And we dedicate our time and our service to these residents. It is a, it, it is a really grueling process. It is yes. a long, grueling process. Um, a lot of people would simply not engage in it because of that, because of how much time is involved with it. Um, what would be your parting message to voters who are watching right now or who might be watching a few weeks from now? Um, give us one sal why they should be supporting you, but also why they should care about this race a great deal. Well, I, as I said earlier, they should care about this race because it's really going to um, involve their district and the outcome of this area. But what I'm, what I'm telling the voters out there is, look, it, every single vote counts. You sometimes feel that your vote doesn't count, but it really does, because if you don't vote, the next one's not going to vote, and the next one's not going to vote. Mm -hmm. We represent these people. We're just their mouthpiece in Albany. So please, take the time to come to the polls. Take the time to understand who is running and what mm -hmm. they're standing for, and contact those individuals and talk with us, because it really is important. Every single vote is important. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us, and I'm sure we will be having you on again here before Josh uh, August, Sturzo September. Josh Sturzo will have Charlie so Evangelista of Geneva, helping. also a candidate for Mike Nizzolio's vacated seat in the 54th District, on this week's edition of Inside the FLX. 
We'll have highlights of that conversation on this show next week. Remember, if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, and if you'd like to drop us a line, send an email to contact at fingerlakes1.com. The summer is in full swing, so whatever your plans, have a super weekend here in the Finger Lakes, and check back here at fingerlakes1.com throughout the weekend for the latest news, weather, sports, and fun. I'll see you again next week.